Howdy, howdy. Happy Wednesday. Rainy, but not dreadful. Because this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. So we did something different yesterday. Excuse me, I did something different yesterday and um, kind of dove into the Word. And I want to read a few verses um, out of Isaiah chapter 52, one of my favorites, um, starting at verse 7. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good tidings, who publishes peace, who brings good tidings of good, who publishes salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. Um, this, these verses, they kind of make me question some Gospels that are being taught out of Christian pulpits, to be quite honest. Um, I know that we are, like, just the next verse, verse 8, Hark your watchmen, lift up their voice, together they sing for joy, for they shall see eye to eye the return of the Lord to Zion. Um, speaks about watchmen, and we are to be watchmen on the tower. We are to look out for um, one another. We are to warn one another if we slip and fall into temptation. Um, but this whole gospel of if you were to die today, would you go to heaven or hell? I just have never found this gospel in the Word. It's not in there. Um, so how did that come about? I mean... Why Why do so many churches have these tracts they send out, which, excuse me, piece of little flower here, um, these tracts that they send out to people, you know, and tracts are good, I don't know if you're uh, familiar with what a track is, but basically it's a little pamphlet with some scriptures, usually these are scriptures that lead people to the heart of God. Um, some tracts, not so much, the gospel's not good news, this is a good news gospel. How beautiful upon the mountain are the feet of him who brings good tidings, publishes peace, brings good tidings of good. This is a gospel of good news. Good news. Hey, God is not mad at you. He sent his son to reconcile you back into himself. He is long-suffering towards you. He is patient towards you. He his loving kindness is in abundance towards you. And that that's good news. Man, that's good news. That's enough to tenderize the hardest of hearts. And I just um just not real keen on these, these some of these ways that people are approaching people with salvation. I think they're fear tactics. Um nobody wants to burn in hell, but they don't know the Lord, so therefore their heart's not being changed by Him. Um, they haven't submitted to Him. I mean, they're living like the world. Um, so just this temporary high, I guess, they get that, okay, I I'm, I'm accepting Jesus. I I'm doing this. I'm going to live for Him now. I'm not going to do my own thing anymore. I don't want to burn in hell. I don't want to burn in hell. So they say the little prayer, and I'm not saying nothing good comes from that. God knows there's testimonies of people who, at that point, everything changed. But for those who didn't really have a heart change, it was just words. It was just an emotion. It was just, you know, a, a, a temporary little fix. And because there was no, um, no engrafting in of His presence in their heart, and then making a true commitment because the kindness of God is what leads us to repentance not hey you're going to burn in hell fire brimstone demons that's all that's all for you that's what God has for you if you don't do this this and this oh, makes me I don't like it I don't like that gospel I don't think that's good news we were instructed to teach the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And what he did for us through those things, his death, his burial, and his resurrection, is enough to 
have a sincere change in our heart and to have an understanding of just how great He loves us. But bringing this news, this gospel of doom and gloom, it's just not cutting it, guys. What do y'all think? How do you feel when you are in a church or you hear somebody talking about it? What Does it make you just think, God, you are so good. You just, I love your word and how you tell us, you know, to talk about hell and brimstone and fire to get people saved. That is just, you thought of it all. That's an amazing way to draw all men into yourselves, you know. So if you have any feedback, please share it. Where does this gospel, where does it line up in the word? Please show me. Help me out. Maybe I'm wrong. I am, believe me, I've been wrong before. And God knows it. And I thank God for all those who knew I was wrong and prayed for me because he's opened my eyes to some of those things. And y'all probably know who you're talking about, who I'm talking about. I'm not saying that, um, I just don't think it's the right approach. I need some feedback, guys. I really do. Let me know, okay? Blessings to you all. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of the week. I'm not sure if I'll be on the rest of the week, but if I am not, goodness and mercy overflowing to you. Bye-bye. Good enough. He didn't say that. He said, I will bring forth within you what that seed is coming forth, whether you can see it or not. It's only invisible, but it's going to be manifested to the outward as well. Thank and what you. stood out to me too is woman represents the church, but the old order dies out. When she was mentioning about it, she died. But that's the old order has to die out so that that man child can come forth. So that the father ministry can rule and can reign and can come forth. And I say, I praise the Lord for that. I do. I do. Um, Thank you, Lord. Jacob. Yeah. Jacob's oh. name, you know, means the schemer, trickster, supplanter. And that's the way he acted at one time. And, you know, often on that, he wrestled with the angel. And God said, I'm changing your name and your nature because you're no longer going to be called Jacob, deceiver, and schemer. Now you're going to be called Israel, prince with God. That's what you're going to be called.